Clapper and Right to Life and everyone, and I want to thank them because they contacted me originally and uh, talked about having a safe abortion bill. Of course, you know our stance on abortion. We're, we're not for it. We're against it. But we also know that it's the law in the state of Louisiana. And until we can really do something about that, uh, I think it's very important that we protect the lives of the mothers and, and they're at least in a safe place when he's, uh, if they choose the traumatic experience of having an abortion. So that's what my bill does. It looks at uh, requirements, much like the requirements for outpatient surgical procedures. One of those requirements is that a physician who administers abortions will have to have admission privileges within the 30 mile radius uh, in, at a hospital within the 30 mile radius of their clinic. And that, that's to me a very key uh, point in saving a woman's life. When you make a bad decision like that, and, and we've all had times where we've made bad decisions, uh, God has been so merciful in those decisions. And so to the extent that a woman decides to make that bad decision, I believe that uh, as legislators and as people that, who you've elected to protect the health and welfare of the state, that we should look out for them even at that time. I think that's where mercy is extended. And so that's what this bill does. It does a number of other things. It also looks at um, physicians and giving proper information on what drugs they're going to administer during the inducement of uh, pregnancy to get, you know, to actually perform the abortion. Now so, you just say the governor of the state of Louisiana. And now the governor of the state of Louisiana, <laughs> Governor Bobby Jindal. <laughs> Look, there's several folks I, I want to thank. First, I want to thank the pastor and all the folks here at White Ferry Road uh, Church of Christ. I, it's not my first time being here. It is great to be back here, and what a, a beautiful, beautiful facility. I suspect they've got a few more people coming recently, and that's a good thing. That's a, I, yeah. it, 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 as, you know, as I, was, I was, had the privilege of talking with the Robertsons and Phil, and I said, I don't care why they're coming as long as I hear the gospel while they're here. I'm just glad that they're, Amen. so thank you to the pastor uh, for having us back here. It's great to be back here. I want to thank our delegation. Oh, we got uh, from the House, we've got Frank Hoffman and Katrina Jackson. I want to thank each of them for the legislation they're offering this session to protect innocent human life. Uh, we also have Bubba Cheney, and I want to thank him for his strong support for these pro-life bills, and our senators, Mike Walsworth and Bob Kostuck, and I want to thank them as well uh, for their hard work to help protect innocent human life. Let's give your delegation a great round of applause. I know they're going to go to Baton Rouge on Monday. You know, we got our sheriff, Jay Russell, here, and I want to thank him. We've got uh, Judge Wendell Manning here as well. Uh, we've got... Uh, we got folks from uh, our federal delegation, their office, and again, I want to thank our Pastor Mike for, for allowing us to be here. We got folks from uh, Francis Thompson's office as well, and I want to thank him for his strong support as well for, for this kind of legislation. There are other folks here as well. I want to thank Life Choices, their board and supporters, community prayer partners, and other local pastors that are here, the Monroe Chamber of Commerce, uh, Louisiana Right to Life, and I know there are several other groups as well. I want to thank all of them for their strong support. You know, one of the things, let's give all these folks a round of applause first of all. You know, so often I come up here to make economic development announcements, and those are incredibly important. And here we're today to talk about something a little different. We're here today to talk about the fact that in our state, we uphold a culture of life. We value human beings as being created in our creators in God's image. And it's great to be here with many of you who have fought this hard fight every day for our, our finest traditions of faith, family, and life. The pro-life community here today, the pro-life legislature, our administration, we've worked together throughout the years to pass several important bills to protect innocent human life in our state. We've seen many important pro-life victories that have helped to build us a better Louisiana. You know, and I'm proud, one of the things I was talking about how we rank at the top of the list when it comes to ethics reforms and cutting taxes and job creation in the economy, one of the things I'm most proud of is that year after year, Louisiana has consistently been ranked as the most pro-life state in the country, year after year. <laughs> but we must never become complacent. We must never stop our hard work. We must continue to fight. The future of our state and our nation depends on it. That's why we're here today, and specifically, in addition to the many other issues that will come up, we're here today to announce two important bills. I want to thank again Frank and Katrina for offering these bills. We're including them as part of our governor's package that will help to continue that tradition of protecting life in our state. I'm going to uh, tell you briefly what their bills do, but I'm going to let them come up, and they can tell you better than I can. First, uh, Representative Hoffman introducing, has introduced House Bill 305 
to ensure that abortion providers are not using taxpayer-funded school time and resources to promote a pro-abortion agenda to our school children. This legislation will bar employees of abortion clinics and their affiliates from presenting to students at public and charter schools. This will also prevent abortion clinic employees from distributing to public or charter schools or their students any material created by or bearing the identifying mark of any abortion clinic or its affiliates. And I think that and not only as governor, but as, as a father of three young children, I think we can all agree as parents that it is absolutely right that we don't want these kinds of materials being distributed at our schools. We don't want our kids being exposed to this when they're going to get an education uh, at their schools. The second important uh, piece of legislation being offered by Representative Katrina Jackson, House Bill 388, uh, this will be legislation that will help to make sure that to help protect our, our women in this state. This legislation will require abortion doctors to maintain admitting privileges at a nearby hospital. And by the way, this is a standard that's already imposed upon doctors at ambulatory surgical centers. It will require also that a woman be provided with the same information under the woman's right to know law, regardless of whether the abortion is performed surgically or pharmaceutically. This bill will end the practice of holding abortion providers to a lower standard of safety than that applied to other doctors and other clinics. Both of these common sense bills. Let's give Frank and Katrina another round of applause for offering these bills. And I want to applaud them both. As you can see, there's bipartisan support in our state to protect this culture of innocent life. These bills are going to build upon the work we've done these last six years to protect the unborn. I believe our state's truly a better place because each and every person here today continues to invest in our future by fighting for innocent life. Uh, and I'll close before I ask uh, Frank and Katrina to come up here. I'll close by saying this. We mustn't become complacent. You know, it is good that we are doing so much to protect innocent human life, but the reality is that the work continues. These two bills are important steps forward. So much more work has to happen here in Louisiana, but also across our entire country. And this is one of the most important issues of our day. And I really do believe that our culture is, you know, we really are at a very critical point in terms of our culture in this great country. And so many of us, I'll close with this final admonition, and I promise there's no collection place for the going around, so don't worry, you're not. But I will close with this admonition that, well, the pastor's like, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> so, we won't be pastor any collection, but he might not. You know, look, as believers, sometimes we fall in this trap where we talk about the good old days. But we keep saying, oh, things used to be better when we were kids. They didn't show this kind of stuff on TV. Or I didn't have to cover my kids' eyes and ears when we went to the movies. And, and I understand that. I get that. There used to be a family hour on TV. And it seemed like it used to be easier to raise your kids with the values that were so important to all of us. And I understand that. But, you know, as believers, I, I don't think we want to start saying that, oh, everything was better in the good old days. Because the reality is we believe in a risen Lord. We believe in a God that's ultimately victorious. We don't always understand his plan. And I can't tell you what his plan is today or, or tomorrow, but I know in the end he wins. Amen. I know in the end the tomb's empty. <laughs> so as we engage these issues, and these are critical issues, these are absolute, these are eternal issues. I hope we'll do so with good cheer and good faith so that those that are believers or not believers look at us and say, you know, there's something they have that I want. The joy and the peace of the Holy Spirit, that, that calmness of knowing the love of an almighty and eternal God and so these are important fights, but I hope we'll be civil in our tone, and I hope we'll be shown by our love and our demeanor that we worship a loving and forgiving God. And that's so important, because if all people see is a bunch of folks saying, well, things are better than the good old days, I'll say, why do I want to join that group? <laughs> what, do, what do they have that's so special? And I think that we need to be more, we need to have the confidence of our convictions. Interesting you mentioned uh, what you just mentioned. That was a, that was a good sermon. He, he does win. <laughs> I teach a... Uh, life group we call it Sunday school class at, at, at my church and we just started, started the book of Revelation so I know exactly what you're talking about thank you for that you're doing the easy one, uh, right <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um, I want to first of all thank Ben Clapper and his folks for being here today Ben is director of Louisiana right to life he had a longer drive than most of you today he lives in New Orleans and they left this morning to be here just for this event today so guys thank you all for being here Ben we appreciate what you did I also want to make mention of Dorinda Bordley. Dorinda works for the Alliance Defense Fund. She happens also to be in New Orleans. And I have to give credit to where it belongs because Dorinda was the one who wrote this bill for me. 
and it's tre tremendously important. As the governor mentioned, we can't have folks that are doing abortions or involved in any way with abortions clinics doing in-service in schools and encouraging those kind of kids in our public schools. So it's a simple bill, but that's what it's all about. I assure you the, the legislators, the senators and uh, representatives standing behind me will co-author these bills. In fact, we, as, as the governor mentioned, we've been named the top pro-life state in America for the last three years at least, and maybe longer than that. And we do it through making it tough to get an abortion in Louisiana. Unfortunately, Roe v. Wade says you can't make a law. If Roe v. Wade is ever overturned, we already have a law in place that immediately makes it a law you can't do an abortion. But until then, we want to make it as difficult as possible for the people doing that. And this bill simply takes another step in that and not allowing these uh, uh, in-service opportunities in schools for anybody involved with that. I am appreciative of the fact that the governor is adding this to his package. That's very important to us, and we appreciate that as well. So once again, thanks a lot. I will finish up with this. I'm uh, very appreciative that the governor has added this bill to his package. I turned to Senator Waldrop and I said, I think this is the first time I've announced the governor. <laughs> <laughs> and hope that it's not the last. <laughs> yes, but what it does show you is that there are issues in the state of Louisiana that Christians can come together on, Amen. get together on regardless of party. My new message on this, I always thought it was just going to be totally pro-life, pro-life. But I was attacked immediately when this bill was filed. Last year, we passed a prayer in school bill. The governor endorsed it. And, signed it and it was such a wonderful thing. And, and as I filed the bill, this bill, I was attacked number one for being a Democrat in filing this bill. Mm -hmm. And I was attacked secondly for being a woman in filing this bill. And, and everything I've read, because I'm not uh, ashamed of the tax, I don't care, because in the end, Governor, we win. Yeah. So I'm never <laughs> ashamed of that and I'm never worried about that. And, and I find great joy in it because what someone told me when I first ran for office is, if you're doing everything the way people want you to, you won't be attacked. But if you're doing everything the way God wants you to do it, you will be attacked. And so my new message in this, and this is what I told them the day I won, I say I'm not, I'm a Democrat by, reg by registration. I'm a woman by birth. But before I'm anything, I'm a Christian. Amen. And so I am challenging. Amen. And so every year, and I thank you guys for helping me to get there a little bit faster and, and further along the walk, I am challenging the stereotypes in Louisiana that says that Democrats and women and blacks cannot be a part of a movement of God. And, and that's really what has been happening. And my colleagues are... Uh, that serve in a house have been very reluctant, even though they believe in God, even though they worship at, at the area churches, to come out against uh, this new machine that wants to take over our country and our state. And I stand firmly on the word, word of God, and, and I will continue to do so. And I'm glad to join with the governor, with Frank, and others in doing so. Thank you. Katrina, I'll just remind you, the last time you introduced me was actually at the Black Caucus Prayer Breakfast. Oh, yeah, and uh, we enjoyed doing that, which was... Uh, we'll be at again, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, but I say that because I want to commend her for, for making that such an, a joyous occasion in Baton Rouge. And, you know, the Governor's Prayer Breakfast will be next week, and we're honored Governor Huckabee will be speaking uh, at that prayer breakfast. And I think it's just a great tradition. I think the more prayer we can have in our state and our nation's capital, the better off uh, we will be as a country. So I, I thank and applaud her for doing that. We'll be happy. I know that we've run late today, but we'll be happy to take questions from the media. And I do want to thank, there are several other folks and other pastors and other churches here. And I want to thank all of you for your strong support. This is uh, going to take a, a lot of effort and a lot of uh, cooperation by a lot of different people. And I do want to thank Ben. He's been a great leader, not only in this issue, but other pro-life issues throughout the years at the legislature as well.